We will now focus on how to embed complex business logic into any business application that you would have created using places. And uh, what we're going to focus on in the beginning is in the same example that we created the earlier videos on. I have the contact form and I'm going to disable the visibility of the contact ID simply because I don't want the user to see the contact ID field. So there are properties that you can set against fields that make that very simple. And now I'm going to add business logic. The scenario here is if the date of birth is greater than 50 years, if the date is greater than 50 years, then I'd like the email field to not be uh, mandatory. And if the date of birth is less than five years, then I'd like to introduce two new fields that I've dragged and dropped onto the form for the mother's first name and the mother's last name. So the scenario is I want the mother's name to be captured in case the contact is less than five years old in our example. And the way this works in places is besides the, the rules that you can set up uh, in the properties of each field, you also have a rule editor that allows you to configure a rules engine to embed business logic of a more complex nature. So now when we do a preview you can see I have added uh, the mother's name and the mother's last name fields and uh, I'm just setting the alignment there. You can see the contact ID field is not visible as well. So once I work with the alignment and the uh, off the layout of the form I now feel the form is ready and the next thing I want to do is I want to embed the required business logic. Now to start with I'm going to focus on setting the business rule so when I click on the rule button I go into the rule editor and within the rule editor I'm going to call this date of birth validation and uh, this is just the name I'm giving to the rule I'm trying to create and in this particular rule is related to creating a, uh, a logic associated with the date field so I'm going to create what we call a session variable which is a variable that I can use to store any value during the user session on my application I've called it vAge variable age the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say that if the date difference using a date difference function okay I have to put in the start date and the end date to capture the, the difference of days between two dates and for, for that I'm going to choose the date of birth value in my rule editor as the start date and I'm going to use the system date which is the current date as the end date divide by 366 to get the number of years so this is just the function I'm using to calculate the number of years or the age I'm then going to populate the age variable the age session variable with the age so I can use that for my logic of enabling and disabling the mother's first name, last name, field, etc. Now the logic I'm saying here in my in my rule is if that the age is less than 5, I'm going to put in an action to the rule and then the second scenario is that if the age is greater than or equal to 50, what should the action be? So as we mentioned that the age is less than 5, then we would like to enable the mother's name and, and mother's first name and last name. You can see that every time I'm trying to embed rules in the rules editor, I have IntelliSense uh, that brings up all the available functions and prompts me on the properties that I need to set for each function etc. So the first one is if it's less than five years of age then I want to enable the mother's first name and last name. 
the rule I'm setting right now is if the age calculated is greater than 50, then the email field is not required. So I'm disabling the visibility of the email field. And then finally the logic, the default is that if the age is in between 5 and 50, then I do not want the mother's name, uh, first name and last name. So once I've set that as well, in effect I've just created, embedded the business logic to adhere to the rules that I've wanted, which is if the date of birth field is less than 5, enable the mother's name the date of birth field is greater than 50 then disable the email because it's not relevant for people over 50 if not uh, the mother's name does not have to be captured now when I go to preview or to test this out you can just see if I select a date that is less than five years the mother's first name and last name are enabled on the form if I go back there and select a, a date that is in between 5 and 50 the mother's name is not required as you can see and if I now go in and select a date uh, where the the age is gra greater than 50 you can see the email address is not required as well so I'm just showing you in preview mode how immediately once you've defined that logic it's it's available in the form for you to test in preview mode after which you can publish it to the user Now once I've saved the update I've made to the form, I'm going to go back to the designer and my next step is to embed uh, another example of business logic. In this case I'm going to say that the first name and the last name are required fields or mandatory fields and this could be done by simply setting a property in the rules uh, in the fields property window and I can put in a custom message as to what should the validation message prompted to the user be. So the first name and the last name are now being made mandatory fields. And the message is I need to have those two fields populated every time you try to save the form. So as you can see, if the user tries to save an entry without the first name and the last name, he immediately gets a validation message and he can look at the form and see which fields are now mandatory. Uh, the next example is, let's say I want to have a validation rule that the first name and the last name cannot be the same. So I want to say that any name that the user enters into the first name field cannot be equal to the name entered by the user in the last name field. And if it is in, indeed equal, then we'd like to throw a validation message that prompts the user that this is not acceptable. So I showed you two ways of putting in the validation. One is a, as a property of the field and this is an inputting a validation message uh, by using the rules editor and uh, here I'm just going to put a message box validation saying if the first name and the last name match then uh, please display this message box. And then the default is I'm just setting uh, some settings for the first name and last name validation rule. So here if I put in uh, Anto in the first name and then I put in Anto in the last name as well and try to save, it will trigger that validation rule and it tells me the first name and the last name cannot be identical and this is now being triggered by the rules engine. Well as if the first name and the last name are not identical, it will now be acceptable. And if it's not acceptable, you can also see that the fields get highlighted in red. The other rules are pertaining to the date. Again, if the date is between 5 and 50 years of age, then the email field needs to be enabled. 
there you go so I've got the full cycle clear this is a 